I think, if you take the big picture here, the very highest quality news, like the SEMP, maybe the Wall Street Journals, maybe even CNBC, for what they do, will always have a place in the world. But that's 1% of all the information that actually matters. And since that high quality journalism, very much like the op-ed part of a newspaper, you can charge very high prices for that, whether it be advertising, subscription, and that's the way the business model will continue over time. For a vast majority, the rest of the content, there is no reason that you need you know, scribes and journalists in the picture. If you look at the evolution of content on the internet, it started with Google aggregating stuff, Yahoo indexing pages, and then you went to some sort of UGC slash personalization mechanism with Twitter. And now we evolved, I think, with companies like Toutiao, with UGC meets um, machine-written content. And this machine-written content now is pretty dumb. Like, it's a fact about what happened yesterday or day before yesterday. But as the machine gets trained more and more on all the information out there, it will, it can, for example, it can look at a political event that happened, look at all the people who are biased left, all the people biased right, and then actually create content which, with very little bias in it. So my actual view is the problem with human editors, especially for qualitative content, is you can't remove bias. And where algos will win in the long term, and they're not there anytime right now, is they will create news articles with less bias than a human editor can ever hope to create. Gary, you want to jump oh, in on that? That sure. seems like fighting words. Those are fighting words, man. Uh, to clarify, I actually don't have a journalism background, uh, which is what makes it strange that I'm in the position that I'm in, and probably makes it strange that I have the position that I do hold in this argument, which is that news organizations, and I'm going to steal a quote from the managing editor of the New York Times, is that great news organizations are meant to transcend any single opinion. So it's not about removing bias from authoritative news and information. It's about reporting the facts the way that they happened as closely to truth as we can, and then to provide a perspective that we believe as a news organization matters to the world. Sometimes that means coming down as a news organization and our editorial and saying, this is what we believe to be right. And then other times it's, let me share with you multiple perspectives that exist in the world effectively on the same plane, and then let the user educate themselves and decide for themselves. When an algorithm, when, when we decide that we're going to use machine to remove bias, which by the way, frankly, I just don't believe any algorithmically driven news product actually wants to do, because it's bad for business. It's bad for Toutiao to remove bias because information becomes bland. We all know, know human psychology means that we are much more likely to click on things we already agree with, right? And we're likely to share those same things as well. So it's bad for business to remove bias and be fully objective. But I think news organizations would tell you that it's actually not good for progress, for civil progress, for civil discourse, because that's not the purpose of news. The purpose of news is to report the facts and then have an opinion about what truth and what, what, what speaking to power actually looks like and actually means. So you can tell I'm, I'm passionate about this because this matters. Because right now, uh, the biggest problem in media literacy in the world and why these algorithmi algorithmically driven news feeds are, in my opinion, bad for the world today is the fact that they just misunderstand the purpose of news in the world. Now listen, Ram, I agree with you. I have no problem saying that news is a tiny part of overall content consumption. Because it's always been that way. News has always been the broccoli to your steak. And I don't expect to change that. I don't think we need to change that. But I think companies that ostensibly are news companies, Total being one of them, the name of the company is literally headlines, right? It's today's headlines. It's the name of the company. When they decide that I'm not going to separate what is news and what is just content, and I'm going to mash it together and pretend that all of it is equal and value as news, that I think is, is, is bad for all of us. The idea about journalism is to make sense of the world and to communicate it to an audience, right? Because people are busy, they live their lives, they don't have time, you know, journalists spend all day learning about something and communicating it in 500 words, right? So there is an editorial role. And, you know, I, I, hate, to, I hate to say this, but I mean, yes, algorithms are very good at surfacing facts and putting them together, but that role of asking questions, um, computers are not good at that. They're good at answering questions. And so the role of the journalist will never change in that way, and the role of news organizations as the institution and the infrastructure to enable individuals to be employed to do that work is not going to change.